Hello guys, happy Thursday and you can hear with your daily no nugget. By the way, you deserve a round of applause because you've made it to pre-Friday Junior. It's like my favorite day of the week. For some reason, I like Thursdays sometimes more so than Fridays. Maybe there's something wrong with me. But today it is very cold in Chicago. It's like 30 degrees and we have a snow forecast tomorrow. Depressing, I know. Therefore, I'm enjoying the little bit of sunshine because look how pale I am. I need sun to make me happy and I need some color. Let's be real here. It's like I'm blending into the walls. Now I have delicious ginger tea sprinkled with like a dash of cinnamon. It's supposed to be so amazing for digestion, circulation. And if you're actually very in tune with your body as I am, you can feel it like warming the tip of your fingers and toes. And you can feel like, you can feel the tea doing its magic. Obviously I eat healthy, right? Obviously you guys eat healthy too. Nobody's perfect, but you have to eat healthy. This is not like a cure-all. I'm a scientist, so I like to experiment with teas. You guys can do your own experimentation and see what works for you because we're all different. Now, I don't get paid to promote any brands of tea, so I suggest you do your own research or better yet, grow your own because it is going to be so much better than anything you buy online. And if I can manage to grow some ginger in my tiny studio in Chicago, I know it looks large, but it's very small. I'm just very good at decorating and making things look much bigger than they appear. But if I can grow ginger in my tiny downtown Chicago studio, you can do it too. Now, that being said, it is uh, something the squirrels and chipmunks and birds obviously love. The first plant that I bought was devoured by these freaking animals and just keep that in mind. Very tasty, dry it out, make your own tea. Um, I'm not promoting any brands, nor do I get any kickbacks. So I do this to help you guys because I want you to be healthy, obviously, Food matters, sleep matters, mental health matters. This is just like, just like the icing, right? It's just a sprinkle of extra goodies for you. So cheers. Now today I'm gonna talk about my favorite subject in the world for now, for now. The Idaho Forum, Mr. Brian Koberger. So many people have asked me, Nika, why are you wasting your time with defending Brian Koberger? including colleagues, because you guys are on here too. And I think Mr. Brian Koberger is, he's one of us guys. He's just a regular average citizen, okay? Just a regular, regular person. No one's special, but to me he's special because I'm going to treat him like we all deserve to be treated, and that is innocent until proven guilty. Reminder, for people saying he's guilty, he's guilty. Aren't you American? Don't you believe in our rights? Please, please use your membrane, use your membrane. Because when you are in that spot, you're not gonna like it. That being said, the average American knows dearly squat about the law. So please, if you are uneducated on this subject and you have access to the internet, what are you doing? Get off my video and go educate yourself on that. I'm serious. I would rather you go learn something else that will impact you in a positive way than to watch this, okay? This, my videos are, yes, they're amazing. Yes, they're educational, but prioritize. Learn about the law and teach your children about the law so that they learn to plead the fifth because we understand that everything that you say can and will be used against you. Now, people have said, Nika, but he's obviously guilty. He has no alibi. He gave a trash alibi. Who gives the alibi of, oh, I was driving around? Really? Mr. Koberger, you're not gonna tell us where or what? It makes you sound shady AF, right? Yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. But if you've been keeping your eyes on this case and stay one as I have, you understand that this case is effed up, something shady. So let's put ourselves in the shoes of Mr. Koberger. If he believes that he is innocent and he believes that he cannot trust the FBI, nor Ann Taylor, nor Moscow PD, nor the other three letter agencies involved in this case, nor any of the frats or sororities or University of Idaho or WSU where he works. 
Do you think that this man is going to give more information? For what? So that it will be used against him? No, I don't think so, right? I know I wouldn't. He all can figure it out. Get back to me when you figure it out. Now, some people have also said, is it possible that he may be protecting somebody? If he is aware of something shady that may be going on at WSU or Moscow PD or U of I, could he be protecting somebody? Now, this is obviously me theorizing, speculating, but to me, I mean, this guy saved, he saved the life of somebody allegedly. And allegedly, he's also very religious. He's very conservative. And I could see somebody with those personality traits as protecting somebody. Because when you have the belief that we are here to serve others and that there are higher powers, potentially, you do the right thing. And sometimes that means self-sacrifice. So I could see that personality trying to protect somebody if, if he really did those things, right? If he really saved the life of somebody and if he's actually conservative and religious, yeah, I could totally see it. We really don't know, but we also have to analyze some very interesting articles that I have found because this is why I always say, guys, be very careful with what you're consuming when you are online. Anyone can make anything up. And if you don't believe me, just scroll through the comments. People have said that I'm balding, that I'm a man, like all this craziness. And then there's like randos just creeping and like liking the comments. And obviously there are lies, but it just shows even in such a small scale how quickly people can put nonsense out there and then it just takes over. So with this massive case going worldwide, they literally dragged his name through the mud. They literally just made a horrible view and created a fake persona of what Brian Koberger is or was or the type of person that he is. But we have zero proof besides those few journal entries. And then we have sheeple or people who believe that just because they watched a few YouTube videos of uh, psychology, how to's, how to spot a narcissist, how to spot a sociopath, how to spot somebody with antisocial personality disorder, how to spot a liar, how to read body language. Okay, you have these people that watch these videos and assume that they know everything. And I'm over here with several degrees in psychology. And even I have difficulty with this because we who have studied psychology in depth, we know that these things are not easily noticeable. Okay, we all have different body language. We all have different um, ways to express ourselves. Even the way we are raised impacts that. So it is not as straightforward as what even PhD um, psychologists on YouTube sometimes make it seem like. It is very complicated. So again, be very cautious. Don't think that just because you watched a YouTube video on psychology, you can now decipher his journal entries or you can now decipher his body language. Like people saying, he's clenching his jaw. That means he's evil and he's demonic and he's possessed and he obviously committed the crime. Or when we see him smiling and he's not clenching his jaw, then we hear he's smiling. Therefore, he is so detached from reality and he obviously did the crime. He has zero remorse. Basically, it doesn't matter what Koberger does. The media has painted a picture of Koberger and that's what took over. That's the image that is going to be very difficult to change back. So the media is very powerful, guys. Don't let them control you. Don't let them control how you view others. Come to your own conclusions. Now, there is an article in the Idaho Statesman saying that Koberger had drastic personality changes and a Allegedly, they started when he was in high school. This article goes on to say that he had issues with a lot of girls in high school. And they didn't like him, allegedly, that they bullied him. Allegedly, they threw things at him. We can't really verify any of that information, right? We can't. We can't just believe everything we hear. So according to this article, it got so bad for Koberger that he ended up finishing high school online. 
Has anybody been actually able to verify that? I have not, but if you have, please leave a comment down below, let me know. Now, there are several articles online saying that he also had lots of drastic personality changes with the weight loss. So allegedly Koberger was a heavier student and then he lost all this weight, he got on a strict diet, he started working out and they said he just became this aggressive bully who was snobby and different. Now, all of our weight fluctuates, right? We all fluctuate. Some of us fluctuate five pounds, some of us 10 pounds, some of us 50 pounds. Do we not all feel different when we lose or gain weight? Of course we freaking do. And if you say no, you are lying. So yeah, I know that if I lose five pounds, I don't feel that confident because I people then are saying, oh my God, are you, are you anorexic? Like, is there something wrong with you? And then if I go 10 pounds above, people are like, oh my God, you're really getting pudgy. So some people who are, you know, sensitive can feel a little bit different because Everyone's going to be finding something they don't like. You cannot please everyone. So you just have to please yourself. Now, is it possible that when he lost weight, he went from the chubby kid that they all knew who was shy and introverted, never really talked to anybody, was not self-assured to, oh, I have higher confidence. Oh, I have higher self-esteem. Oh, I can talk to females now. Oh, I... I feel a little bit more self-assured. Oh, I don't have to wear a hoodie in 85 degree weather anymore. I can wear, you know, whatever, whatever he wants to wear. Okay, I know that all of us can slightly relate. That doesn't mean your personality changed per se, but maybe you became either more or less confident in certain areas of your life. And that can make it so that people perceive that you've changed like all around or that your entire personality is now completely different when really you're pretty much the same person just with more pep in your step or more reserved who knows now i think that's what happened i think he lost the weight he realized oh i'm attractive i can get attention from the female species let's go talk to some some of these ladies and that's normal and that is natural, especially for a young man, young boy in high school. That's normal. So I am going to remind you guys, be very careful of what you read. There's an ar another article saying that Dominique Clark, okay, some rando, random female who supposedly knew Mr. Brian Koberger. We don't really even know. We don't really even know if he, if she actually knew him. A lot of people sometimes just make things up to get attention because they can't get it anywhere else or their mommies and daddies didn't love them. So they have to make things up or be mean to other people. That is how you know low self-esteem. Now, is it possible that Dominique Clark has low self-esteem or doesn't even exist for all I know? But this person said that Brian Koberger didn't understand why a girl said no and did not accept the no. That he was very socially awkward. This was an article found in the New York Post. I have worked with a lot of autistic children. I've worked with a lot of children with ADHD. I have worked with twice exceptional children and young people, young adults. These are people who sometimes have a very high IQ and also have ADHD or a they might be dys dyslexic or they might have trouble focusing or they might have something else going on. Again, some of the children that I have worked with who are on the spectrum have a difficult time understanding when somebody says no, especially when they're first interacting with the opposite gender that is very tricky and can be very tricky for parents to get through to the child to say you know what you have to understand boundaries because they have a they can have more difficulty understanding those boundaries everybody is different that is why it is called a spectrum so 
don't get all hot and bothered and angry in the comments okay go away please i i don't have the energy now i have said maybe koberger is on the spectrum i'm not his therapist i'm just throwing it out there why because his facial expressions are they remind me of a lot of people hundreds of people that i have worked with that are on the spectrum doesn't mean anything he could not be but that would understand right if maybe he didn't understand when a girl said i'm not really interested because i've found out that you have to be extremely direct with these young children on the spectrum okay i had a little boy who i was working with and he had a crush on a girl and the girl was being nice and saying well i'm not really interested and the boy did not understand he kept bringing her little flowers and chocolates and i finally stepped in and said you need to be direct you need to tell him no thank you do not call me please do not call my father do not call my home do not follow me it is not okay and once she said that in a stern manner he understood he was like oh it like clicked like the light bulb went off and he never bothered anybody again so it is possible that maybe he could be on the spectrum but even if he was not how can we verify this actually happened and how can we verify that he does not have a real alibi maybe he just doesn't want to share remember he has the right to remain silent and I actually applaud him for that. Because the way this case has been going, I would have done the same thing. I would have done the same thing. I still feel bad for him, honestly, because it's gonna be April, 2024, guys. That's a long time to be just chilling in a cell. And it's even harder, I believe, for somebody who is highly intelligent. I suspect Brian Koberger has a high IQ. Being a person with a high IQ is very difficult. I know it sounds like that is the equivalent of a beautiful person saying it is so hard to be beautiful in the world, but it can be very difficult to have high IQ. Um, it's very hard to relate to regular, regular people. There's nothing wrong with regular people, but when you're high Q, when you're high Q, when you're high IQ is really high, you have like nothing in common with the average 100 IQ. Okay, uh, average IQ people, we can talk about conversations, like superficial things. How's your children? How's the dog? How's the husband? How's the wife? How was the weekend? Do you like tacos? Okay, it's all great. But people with high IQ, we can also struggle because that hurts my brain and it hurts the brain of a lot of other people with high IQ. It's painful, it's physically painful because we like to talk about deeper things. We don't really talk about people. We don't really like to talk about people. We like to talk about work. We like to talk about things we are passionate about. So I'm just pointing it out. We are all different. And just because Mr. Koberger is different than all of us, potentially, whether he's on the spectrum or he has a Mensa IQ, we should still treat him as a human being. And you know what? We, we should treat him as innocent because this is America. Okay, innocent until proven guilty. I don't care what you think. All right. I should go to work now. Man. Ginger tea is so good. Let me know in the comments what tea you're drinking. I want to know. And have you ever grown your own tea? It is so fun. It's so worth it.
And if you can't, visit a farmer's market. So much better than the stuff in tea bags, I'm telling you. That's when I became a tea lover. When I switched, when I made the switch. Make the switch. Use your membrane, question everything. Question everyone. Don't be afraid of labels, logos, ranks, blah, 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 blah. Uniforms. Uh, That's it, guys. Enjoy your pre-Friday junior, and we will see you soon. You guys have a wonderful night.